Well, hello YouTubers. Mike here. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome to Cooking with Mike. But, what we're going to be cooking today is some um, seed cylinders, or as we like to call them, seed logs for feeding wild birds. Uh, we like to do that here. We always have bird feeders out. We've got three, four of them out there all the time. And we're feeding the outside birds. And we've been buying um, seed cylinders from uh, various places over the years. And they're very expensive, but they're super easy to make. It just took me a little bit of experimenting to figure out how to do it. And I'm showing you everything you need over here to make some nice seed cylinders for feeding outdoor birds. That and a whole lot of bird seed. We got a five gallon bucket full down here because we're always feeding outside birds. So we got a five gallon bucket full of bird seed and we've got a couple bags of it out in the garage that are eventually gonna go in the bucket when it gets low. So we're gonna make some seed cylinders today. I'll show you how to do it. You can save a ton of money by doing it yourself. It's super simple. You just need a few simple things. You need a big mixing bowl. Uh, you need eight packets of gelatin, unflavored gelatin, okay? I find that the Knox works best. Uh, some of the store brands don't seem to work as well. I'm not sure why. Um, I've also tried big bags of gelatin and they just don't seem to work as well as the Knox. Sometimes the Knox is hard to find, but it's worth, worth looking for. You're going to need some containers to put your cylinders in. Um, these containers are containers for our favorite breakfast smoothie mix. Um, I found that these are a pretty good size for making the cylinders. I've tried larger containers too, and I'll talk more about that in a little while. But these containers are what we're going to do today. You need some uh, pieces of uh, one inch PVC pipe to make a hole down through the center of your cylinders so that uh, they can go on to the, uh, the feeders. Our feeders have a hole, have a, have a post that goes through the center of the cylinder and holds onto them. You're going to need a saucepan, measuring cup, and one thing I forgot is you're going to need a little olive oil because you're going to have to lube everything up here because we're going to make a very sticky mixture and um, you're going to have to lube uh, these things and the inside of this with olive oil. Uh, also, all of the uh, implements you use are probably going to need to be lubed up with olive oil. And um, your hands, too, it helps when you're working with this. So I'm going to wear gloves and I'll probably lube up the gloves with olive oil. Just because we're going to make a very sticky mixture and everything's going to want to stick to you. Okay. So... First thing we need to do is we need to start getting the gelatin dissolving in the water because this is going to take a while. We're going to try and dissolve eight packs of gelatin in only a little bit of water. So I'm going to put three and a quarter cups of water in this saucepan, cold water, and then we'll uh, start the gelatin dissolving. Yeah, so only three and a quarter cups of water for eight packets of gelatin. I know that seems pretty extreme, but... We need a very sticky mix to hold this stuff together. So there we go, three and a quarter cups of water. Let me get this on the stove and we'll start dissolving the gelatin in it. Okay, I had a little issue with my camera, so you didn't get to see me putting these eight packs of gelatin over here into the saucepan with the three and a quarter cups of water, but trust me, they're in there and it is a big gloopy mess. It's going to take a lot of stirring to get that all to dissolve. Trust me, this is going to take a while. But hey, Rome wasn't built in a day. You know, cooking takes time, even if you're cooking for birds. Speaking of birds, we have parrots. So we got a couple of them here in the house. So you may hear them in the background. They like to be the part of any a part of any conversation that's going on. So they will probably chime in from time to time. Anyway, I have this on the smallest burner on the stove on low. Don't want to boil it, just want to warm it up, and uh, with lots of stirring, all that gelatin will eventually dissolve. Believe me, it will. Uh, if you boil it, it's just going to turn into a stringy mess, so don't boil it. While we're waiting, I'll stop and stir this from time to time, but while we're waiting, let's get everything else ready. Okay, as for quantities, um, I measured this out once. Three of these size containers is about 20 cups of bird seed, okay? So I'm going to do three of these containers. Um, like I said, I've done bigger containers in the past, and you can do bigger containers if you want. I just fill them up to the, to the rim. 
dump it in there. You can do bigger ones if you want. The thing is, unless we've got a lot of migratory birds coming through, like in the spring or the autumn, um, these don't get eaten fast enough, then they'll start rotting. So um, this size is pretty good for like um, late summer now when we don't have that many birds out here, just the locals. And uh, these will get eaten quick enough that they won't rot. Okay. Okay, so there we go. It's about 20 cups of bird seed. A little bit messy here. Um, good quality bird seed. Lots of uh, black oil. Um, sunflower seeds. It's got some peanuts. Got some cracked corn. Um, a lot of birds will just throw the cracked corn down on the ground, but the squirrels will eat it. They love it. Um, just got to keep the squirrels off of the uh, bird feeders. And, uh, you know, there's occasional almonds and other nuts in here. It's a good mix. The birds absolutely love it. Eat it up out of our feeders and in the seed cylinders. So, uh, yeah, get yourself good quality uh, bird seed mix. And uh, I'm going to stir this stuff over here. It's going to take a lot of stirring. It's got some big lumps in it now. The lumps, all that powder that was floating on the surface is kind of consolidated into lumps. But as this heats up and as I keep stirring it, it will eventually dissolve. Okay, so while we're waiting, I'm going to get the olive oil down. And I am going to grease up everything so that uh, it doesn't all stick together when I'm trying to make these things. So one thing I forgot to mention early on, well, this is sticky. I think I said that, but it's also very messy. So I have covered the, uh, the countertop here with some of the paper we use for lining the bottom of our, our parrot's cages. Um, it's, it's regular absorbent paper on one side and shiny waterproof stuff on the other side. I've got the waterproof side up for this operation, but you can use like um, newspaper, wax paper, whatever you've got. All right, so I'm just gonna, a little olive oil spritzer here. I'm just gonna spritz everything good with some olive oil. Get a couple of utensils out here I'm gonna need. I'll need this for scooping the stuff out of the thing. And then I'm just gonna, with my hands, Make sure everything's well coated with olive oil all over. Trust me, this will make a big difference when it comes to trying to get your seed cylinders out of the molds. I don't know how many times I've used these molds now, but they are perfect. Absolutely perfect for this. So we are ready to go once the um, gelatin is all dissolved. It's actually a pretty simple process. Pretty simple and quick, except for getting the gelatin dissolved. That's time consuming. So yes, it took a little time and a lot of stirring, but all those lumps have dissolved. There may be a few little lumps in there, but a few little lumps don't matter. As long as you get all the big lumps dissolved. So I'm going to turn the heat off on this because I don't want it too hot. Because I don't want to burn myself with it during the next operation. So let me reposition the camera. And we'll be ready to go with this. Our house is just full of critters. Like I said, we have a couple of parrots. We also have a couple of cats in here. And right now they are locked up on opposite sides of the houses, but you may hear some meowing in the background. The one nearest me wants out. He wants to become part of the video. He thinks he's a movie star. Anyway, the next step is we're going to take this stuff, which is still pretty hot, but it's uh, all the gelatins dissolved in it, and we're just going to dump it right in here over this. Alright, and this stuff all needs to be thoroughly mixed up so everything gets wet 
with that gelatin mix. And I have found that the easiest way to do that is to just get my hands in there and stir it up. But I'm going to first lube up with some olive oil. Got my gloves on too. And like I said, this could be a little hot. So, and just make sure everything is thoroughly wet. That liquid's going to want to tend to pool at the bottom. You just want to make sure everything is thoroughly wet with it. It's well distributed throughout the mass. This is going to get messy, hence the, uh, the covering on the countertop and the gloves. And this stuff is going to be just horrendously sticky as it starts to cool, too. There's not a lot of difference between gelatin and glue. We're actually using it as a glue to hold these seed cylinders together. Okay. Yeah, I'm making a mess. Alright. Clean up? Well, that's another story. Unfortunately, not like the... Uh, the TV chefs, I don't have a team to come behind me and set up and clean up afterwards. I have to do it all myself. Alright, so I'm going to position a tube right here, roughly in the center, and start filling the container up around the tube. I'll hold the tube down so I don't wind up getting seed in it from the bottom. Scoop all the way down to the bottom of this so that I get the really wet stuff down at the bottom. Get some of that in here. So like I say, the, the liquid tends to want to settle to the bottom. Now you got to pack this stuff in tight. And I mean pack it. Don't be a sissy about it. This stuff's got to be packed in here tight. Or the first bird that comes along once you put these out on your feeder is going to pick the whole thing apart. you got to make it... you got to make them earn their dinner, okay? they got to... They gotta put a little effort into taking the seeds out of this thing. So you gotta pack it together tight, get the voids out. What I like to do is make it a little high. And take a spatula like this and just smash it down in. There we go. There's one well-packed seed cylinder. Get that out of the way. We'll start another one. And you just keep this up to use up all your stuff. Now, if you have a little bit extra left over, I have found that you can pack these into like measuring spoons and stuff. And let it harden up, and they're nice treats for your birds then. Your birds will absolutely love them. They're so full of the good stuff birds like. And of course, they'll have to work a little bit to, to get it apart, so it'll keep them quiet for a while. Kind of like, um, I don't know if you've ever bought NutriBerries for your birds. Or as we like to call them around here, orbs of silence. Yeah. They'll keep the bird quiet and busy for a while when they squawk it. And it's, you know, it's just this easy, pretty much. You know, you see how, how easy this is. It's a little uh, manual labor intensive, but... Anything worthwhile is worth a little work. Saving a lot of money over buying these things in either the feed store or online. There's two. And then here comes number three. So, once I get these all three packed, what I'm going to do is 
I'm going to stash them in the refrigerator overnight. Let the gelatin harden up. And it is going to harden. It's going to get good and hard too, let me tell you. That's what we want. And we want it to really hold these things together tight. That's why we use so much gelatin. So, to stash them in the fridge overnight. And then what I'll be able to do is I'll be able to take them out of the molds. And they'll hold together. They're not quite done yet at that point. There's another operation that takes a little while. We'll talk about that later. But they're close to being done at that point. I always have a little bit extra. I think the gelatin takes up some space. Well, that and the, the center rods take up a little space, too. I always have a little extra. So, like I said, I can make some little treat balls for the birds. So there we are. All right, there we go. We got three seed logs made, or seed cylinders. I've heard both ways. Um, and we got a couple little uh, mini cylinder treats for birds right here. So uh, I'm gonna stash all this stuff in the fridge. Overnight, the gelatin will harden up rock hard because we use so much. And tomorrow I'll be able to get these out of the molds and they should all hold together. So let me get these in the fridge. So there they are, safely stashed in the fridge, and tomorrow we will uh, go through the next steps to turn them into actual bird food. They're not quite there yet. Stay tuned to see what else you have to do. All right, see you in the morning. Okay, these have been in the fridge overnight. It's time to pull them out of their molds. And uh, I had to slit them to get them out the first time, but now that I'm using, reusing these molds, I just have to take the duct tape off. And... Uh, They'll pop right out. And there we go. Hold the uh, hold the pipe out, and there we go. There's a seed log or seed cylinder. I've heard both types of terminology. And of course, I've got the uh, counter lined again. So just gonna, these things are a little bit sticky. We're going to fix that though. I'll show you how we're going to fix that stickiness issue. And uh, this really makes cleanup easy, especially since I'm normally the one who does the dishes and cleans up in the kitchen. Sort of a division of labor between me and my wife. She's normally the one that cooks, although sometimes we mix it up. Sometimes hard to get out because I greased them with olive oil. All right, look at those seed cylinders. Any self-respecting bird would just love to get a hold of them, huh? There we go. There's a nice uh, seed ball treat. And there's another one. So, how are we going to fix the stickiness issue? And they're still kind of wet too. We need to put them in front of a fan in a dry area and let them dry out for a few days to a week before we use them. And they will harden up rock hard then and dry out. And these will last a long time once they're dried out. Um, right now as they are, they're still pretty wet and they will rot quickly if we don't dry them out. So let me get them set up in front of a fan. And I'll show you that. So there we go. I've got them um, set up in front of a box fan there. And I'm gonna just let them sit there in the breeze for Oh, the next few days or a week to dry out really good. I've got them oriented so that the the wind can blow over and through the central holes in them. What I'll probably do in is a day or two, I will probably just flip them 180 degrees so that they get dry all around really well. And uh, then they will last a long time when they're dry. They also get very, very hard when they're dry. They're still a little squishy and soft while they're wet but they will get very hard when they're dry and the birds will have to work for their dinner a little bit. It'll take them a while to peck them apart. They won't come apart. If I put these out right now, you know, the first couple of birds that come along can peck them apart. They're that soft, but they will get really hard and uh, they'll last out there on the feeders for a while. So we're just gonna let this run 
and um, and we'll see these in action later. Okay, these have been in front of the fan for a few days now, and they are done. They are bone dry and rock hard. And uh, what I've done is I've moved the fan, switched it back and forth, so it's blowing at them from different directions. And uh, they are fully dry now, so they're ready to go. So I will take a couple of these out and put them on our feeders, and we'll see if the locals like them. I'll bet they will. They've eaten up every other one I made. So here's the type of feeders we use. They uh, have a pole in the center, and uh, this sits on top of it, like so. And then I put the little roof on it to keep the rain off. It's got a little purchase for the birds to sit on and peck at it. So let me get these, uh, these seed cylinders up. And uh, I'll get out of here so the birds will come down out of the trees and they will start pecking on them immediately. So here we are. It's, it's bird heaven back here in the backyard with the feeders and the water bowl. And uh, the hard part is just keeping the squirrels off of them. We've got the little umbrellas on the, on the posts to help. But I'm going to need to cut back some of these trees soon because it's getting to the point where they can... Some of the more athletic ones can make the jump. So... Uh, yeah, I have to do some tree trimming. Okay, let me get out of the backyard. Uh, I know there's birds in these trees, and they're just waiting for me to leave to come down and have a snack. Oh, and there's one of those pesky squirrels over there. Yeah, you just get the leavings that the birds drop on the ground, okay? You stay off the feeders, because you guys can really empty a feeder quick. Well, looks like we have some customers for the new seed cylinders. We have a lot of blue jays in this neighborhood. They're year-round residents. So they spend a lot of time on our feeders. They seem to like them. Oh, here comes another one. So they're easy and cheap to make. Give it a try. Save yourself some money. Your neighborhood birds will like them. Anyway, if you found this video at all interesting, educational, informative, whatever, give it a like, give it a thumbs up, and subscribe to see my future videos. And there will be lots more videos coming out on all kinds of different subjects. Press that little bell icon that YouTube wants you to press to be notified when new videos come out. As a subscriber, you will be notified when I release a new video. And uh, check out my second channel, Electric Geek 64, if you're all into electronics or retro computing. And... Thanks again for watching this video. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.